welcome to another Meet the Nikolai Retailer stream. Today we're going to be joined by Gabby from Ballet Boutique. She actually has a few stores. Um, she joined us a while ago and today we're going to be joined by her again. So if you have any questions about point shoe fitting, anything point shoes, anything to do with the, our brand Nikolai, feel free to drop it in the comments and we will work our way around as many questions as we possibly can. So we're going to just pop her onto the screen now. Let me just get the request. Yay! Hi! Hello! <laughs> How are you? Oh, very good, thank you very much. I'm Perfect. losing weight, so I'm very happy. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I like the little um, scrunchies and stuff you've got behind you there, and the bows. Oh, They're really I, sweet. I choose a different view uh, to the store today, so you can see the beautiful chandeliers we have. Yes, they're really nice. I yes, really they like are. <laughs> um, so would you like to just introduce yourself like you did last time? Because obviously we'll have viewers that haven't met you before. Yes, of course. Hi, everyone. My name is Gabby Martinez. I am the Poncho Master Feeder of the Ballet Boutique Company Group. We are seven stores located in Mexico and also here in South Miami. We do have stores in, in Merida, Yucatan, uh, which is very close to, to Chichen Itza, where the Mayan people is. We do have one store in Cancun. Uh, that's a store everybody wants to visit. You are, of course, more than welcome, Leanne, to visit us anytime in I'd Cancun love so. after this pandemic pass. We do have a store in Veracruz, which is a beautiful place, uh, very close to the ocean. We, we, we are an ocean people. We like, we oh, like I love to be the close ocean, to so the ocean. I'm a big lover. And we do have two stores here in South Miami. We have one in the South Miami uh, location, and we are all Oh, today, we are broadcasting from our beautiful ballet boutique Doral in downtown Doral. Fabulous. Um, would you like to give us a little tour of the store? Yes, of course. This is one of the most beautiful stores, I think, in America, in the whole world, in the <laughs> universe. <laughs> I designed the store uh, with a friend, uh, which is a very renowned architect, and we went to the school to school together. So he helped me to design this store to resemblance uh, the entrance of the theater. You can see the beautiful yes. chandeliers, the balance. Uh huh. We also have. Beautiful custom made wood cabinetry. Very nice. That's the point shoe area, one of uh -huh. the areas. That's me, of course. And this is the front of the store. You can see the beautiful balance. Love that. It's a great touch. Yes, it is. So when you come into our store, the first thing you see is this beautiful tutu. Stunning. That's the, the last tutu I, I wear. I ah. was very, very young and very, ah. very skinny. So that's <laughs> like a teeny tiny tutu. It was handcraft, especially for me, custom made. And we have this beautiful antique chair. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yes, it is. You can see. And then when you walk into the store, this beautiful round countertop says hello to you. It's huge. Wow. We, of course, have our two security guards. Uh -huh. Let me see. 
Yes, we do have one here. <laughs> That's cute. And we have another one there. Oh. Okay. And I'm not sure if you uh, can see the beautiful round counter. We have yes. our, our feeding area here. Mm -hmm. We have this beautiful bench. I rescue uh -huh. and restore. Oh, nice. Oh, that's really pretty. I love the print. Yes. It, it's antique. Oh, it's really nice. And we have more chairs right there. Everything is, um, we, we use this beautiful pink satin in, in everything. Pink is best, of course. Yes, everything. <laughs> and this is the poncho area uh -huh. where you can see the bar. Very nice. And we set this in a little platform, as you can see. Ah, yes. Because I do all the fittings on the floor. So uh -huh. we use this so platform. So this is the only store where I am actually not in the bare floor, which is great. Mm -hmm. We do have here uh, a, an area. You can see the beautiful chandeliers. Very nice. We, we do have a lot of chandeliers. This area we are using now uh, to broadcast mommy and me classes I'm giving to the, to the uh, moms and some studios and the downtown Doral Mall that has been requesting me. And we have all this mo mobile. You can see. You can move. So you um, can yes. adapt. You can adapt the space uh -huh. pretty much to, to whatever you need. In Backstool, we have more of this. Very nice. So if we need to restock more, more things, we, we bring more of these. These are the red dressing rooms. Uh-huh. They are really nice, very, very big. spacious. Yes, they have their own chandelier, of course. Oh, wow, that's so extra. I love it. Yes, and they all have these beautiful mirrors. You can see I'm losing weight. I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> and I said this a small area here with, with the tutus and all these oh. stuffed animals. To broadcast the mommy and me class, Aww. the one I was talking to you before, and in this little room, we have our import export. There you go, our import export department. Mm -hmm. So when we are import or ex and exporting from from Mexico, this is packed, I get like you. really packed that you cannot walk inside. Mm -hmm. This is my little office. Cute. It's really small, but I love it. Fab. And I have all the samplers here. And we have another antique piece of furniture. Everything mm -hmm. is antique, not me. <laughs> love it. <laughs> yes, this is a very um, nice... So Very I noticed nice recently store. that um, you was doing some um, uh, seminars on Zoom. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Like, what was it for? What was you educating? Tell us about it. I want to know. Well, um, yes, I, I, um, I am a truly believer that you can only be better and make everybody better through education. The, but for me, to me, education is the, is the magic word, the magic key that can open every, each and every one of us to a better tomorrow. I grew up in a family of seven, 
Um, wow. Education was not something I was entitled to have um, because my father was very old when, we, when he married my mother. He was 30 years older than my mother. So he was a truly, truly believer. He belongs to a different time that the money should be given to my four brothers to put them through to college. So I was encouraged to, um, to dance, to take piano lessons, to learn how to cook, and Hi, Mr. Grishko. <laughs> yes, and all the things that you're supposed to do as a lady and the, that the things that they were accepted as good in my father's time. Mm -hmm. I was always a rebel. So I, I started teaching as an assistant when I was 14, 15 years old. And I put myself through college. Uh, my father was so upset. But anyway, I did it. And I later in life have the opportunity to finish my my MBA and mm -hmm. my master's degree in science and earn scholarships. And since I have such a rough time getting access to education, now as an entrepreneur, I put together a program in Ballet Boutique Mexico. Uh, what is what we call uh, let me translate for you. Um, continuous education for teachers. So the teachers through us have access to methodology courses, classes, to point shoe classes, to repertoire classes. Wow. Everything you can imagine. And since the pandemic hit us, I put myself together after the initial shock and I said, what can I do to help? So I started talking with many of the very good friends I have in Mexico and I've been putting together using the, the Zoom platform, different seminars to help the teachers. There is so much, so much for, our, for the students, for our students and so little for our teachers and teachers are struggling a lot because they have lost main of their income. Of so course. I already put uh, several seminars for teachers. I talk with my very good friend, Carmen, which is a very well-known psychologist. That, that she is the one who keeps my sanity <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> So I said, Carmen, you need to help me. And she graciously agreed. And for instance, two weeks ago, we put together a seminar with the help of Carmen for teachers and they had access to tools to, to better understand all the emotions they are having and how to cope better with the students, with the parents, and, and try to survive this crisis. And this, this week, I, I put together, and I was very happy, this happens on Saturday mm -hmm. at four o'clock, mm -hmm. another very successful seminar. We had more than 100 teachers, uh, and the seminar was called um, Digital Tools for Beer for virtual dance teachers. And it was given to them in a very basic, very basic language, nothing for them to have more stress, uh, but by the contrary, very easy tools for them to use, how to improve their online classes, mm -hmm. how to, to approach their students in a better way, how to improve the sound, the movement. It yes. was very successful. Uh, of course, in everything I'm giving, 
uh, I'm, I'm sure I am letting some space at the end to have a quest questions and answers, you know? Mm -hmm. And so the teachers can ask some questions. Um, the speakers are nothing but gracious and they are answers, the, the, the teacher's questions. For this Thursday at 10 a.m., mm -hmm. I will be hosting for over 100 teachers uh, nutrition during the pandemic uh -huh. for, for the teachers uh, can approach their students, the students' parents, of, and of course themselves, with a, a better understanding of the healthy issues yeah, that they are involved when you are in a lockdown in your house mm -hmm. with uh, more or maybe less food, and you need to be very, very conscient of your weight, of your students' weight, mm -hmm. and this is going to be given by a medical doctor who ha who is a friend of mine, and she is being very nice. She's a, mo a ballerina's mother. So every speaker is somehow related to the dance world. Oh, wow. You know? So they, they really understand what we are struggling of and course. all the concerns. And they are being able to address all these teachers in Mexico in a very nice and warm uh, way. And... I've been very happy building this community of survivors and giving them support during during this pandemic. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it's really important to, um, you know, in this time that we've got off, not only um, enjoy it and do stuff, but also take a moment to get as much information as we can and to better ourselves and our businesses. Um, and our dancing, of course, so that when we come out, we're stronger than ever. Um, and I'm we sure have, we will be. You know, we have the tools to go forward and make a difference when we come yes. out of lockdown fully. And it will be great if we are all come out very fit and skinny and healthy. That will be <laughs> great. <laughs> healthy. Healthy is the key. Is the yes, key word. Definitely. And healthy mentally as well, right? Because yes, of course. some people That's are struggling mentally um, yes, during this lockdown not also. Yes, your husband neck. No. <laughs> um, so tell us a little bit about the point you fit into do, because you travel around a bit a lot as well, right? Well, yes. Uh, when the pandemic hit us, Leanne, I was doing an average of 100 fittings, traveling all over Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, the teachers set the appointments for their schools. I uh, have several talks with them. We agreed on the mix of ponchos they want for the studios and the sizes. The sizes is very important because you have different uh groups with different ages and it's not it doesn't make any sense to bring big sizes to a group of girls who are nine years old and they are not going to be using six or seven or yeah, eight exactly we do have i always carry some just in case but it's not the main bulk of what I put together for the teachers. I mm -hmm. talk to the teachers. Uh, I have very many, many talks with the teachers before I decide what point shoes in what uh, sizes, widths, and strengths I'm going to be offering to that particular school. Mm -hmm. So I was doing like 20 to 25 feedings per school every day when, mm -hmm. when this pandemic hit us. I was very, very worried not to be able to come back to the States where my husband is, which oh, I, yeah. love. I love him dearly. Yeah. He's English. 
Remember. remember yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I, I don't want to have any problems with the English army. I am treating him extremely well. Um, uh, I was very scared not to be able to come back to the state where my husband is on time. I was able to do so. But by the time the pandemic hit us, I was doing an average of 100 ponchos per week. Wow. Ponchu fittings uh -huh. per week. Um, so with the traveling around for pointy fittings, um, are you just, do you just travel to Mexico for that? And obviously your stores in uh, Florida or? We, our, our, our main market for professional, at studio professional point shoe fittings is been Mexico. I'm, I'm, I'm very well known in Mexico, like, like, the, like some sodas or the Holy Ghost, or whatever, or the devil, <laughs> maybe. Yes, you can, you can choose if I'm, I'm like the Holy Ghost or the devil, whatever, it's fine. I, I don't care, we are in the pandemic mode. I'm very <laughs> well known in Mexico, and the teachers uh, have been trust me with their students, some of them for the past six or seven years. They, they wait for me to come we discuss what they need for that specific group of girls. And uh, in some, sometimes they even invite other schools, <laughs> bless me. you, other Thanks. schools to come to, to, their, to their studios to be fitted. That happened to us in a very nice place called Zacatecas, which is a ma magical, magical village. You can still see um, people in horses. It's beautiful. Oh, wow. Yes, it's beautiful. It's Patrimonio de la Humanidad. Human heritage, I think, would be the translation. Well, this is the uh, fifth year, sixth year, we are coming to Zacatecas. And uh, every time I come to this place, the teacher, Alondra, I'm saying hello to her, is very nice, and she invites studios all over the place and they come and meet we schedule every, every fitting so the girls and the moms and sometimes the parents the, the dads they don't need to wait uh much time mm -hmm. to be fitted of course one day uh sat uh i encourage them to ask as many questions they want in some of the studios I often offer a little conference I put together that is called Myths and Realities from the Point Shoes. So uh, the teachers can have some relax in the, in the part of ex explain everything to the parents. So they just let me do all the explanations I take the blame for the high cost of the point shoes. <laughs> I also take the time. It's okay. I prefer to take the blame so the teachers can have a break. A, 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 a break. Yeah. Um, but I also take the time to explain the parents why the point shoes are so expensive. Yeah, right. I, it's always good I, to explain in detail about it all. Yes. I, I, I use... Uh, a very, a very uh, non-complicated language. And I'm very happy because we are having uh, every time more and more dads coming to us to, to listen the myths and realities of the Ponchu uh, conference. It's not long, it's 25 minutes, 20 minutes, and I always allow them to have 10 to 15 minutes question and answers. And it's been, it's, it's been a very nice. Here in Florida, we are also doing at studio poncho fittings, not as much as we do in Mexico, but so far we've been traveling. We were traveling a lot doing poncho fittings with, uh -huh. amazing, with amazing results. Perfect. 
Um, tell us a little bit about your favorite um, Nikolai point shoe models um, and a bit about your top selling models, for example. Well, I ask, um, I, uh, I would love to ask you uh, to explain us again what happened with uh, Grishko and how they can find Nikolai's that it, they are exactly like the Grishko's. My, fav my personal favorite, it's, it is and forever will be the 2007. That, mm -hmm. Those are the ones I personally use. I love them very much. Did you get the 3007s, by the way? No, I did not have anything free. You oh, you need to get some free files. <laughs> the 3007 model, the upgraded version of the 2007. Um, no. You need it. It's you better. It. As you, <laughs> you can see, get I am a four and a half, three or four X. Uh-huh. Just you write it down. I will give you my address. You need some and you should stock them because they are so much more improved than the 2007. I know. Um, but I anyway, know. guys, for you guys that are watching that don't know, um, our name for um, the USA is Nikolai, which is Mr. Grishko's first name. And it was important to us um, during the difficult times that we were going through to be able to distribute the real... Grishko points is under Mr. Grishko's first name, Nikolai, to ensure that you guys still got authentic made in Russia products, but also you got access to a wider range of our products, the whole range, and better customer service, but also quicker time in getting your products. So um, the way that you would tell if you're getting real, real Nikolai point shoes um, is on the back, obviously, mine are going to say Grishko because I'm in Europe, so I'm still under the Grishko trademark. But you will have Nikolai wrote here, and you'll have Made in Russia. This is very important. It's got to say Made in Russia. It would not say Handmade or anything else, Made in Russia only. And if you want to find real Nikolai, you know, point shoes, you can go on our website, and we've got a retailer locator, which can find you your nearest retailer, if you struggle with that, you can just simply message us or drop us an email and we will tell you your nearest retailers. And if they haven't got in stock some models that you want to try, you can just ask them and they can get them in for you. And now, of course, they'll get them in even quicker. We've also got much better turnaround times for you guys with custom order shoes. So that's fantastic. And not forgetting the dance wear. We've got an incredible range of dance wear that you'll now get access to which um, is stunning. We've always got new collections. We take a lot of time choosing our fabrics. We do a lot of research into our products. They get very tested by like the Garner Academy, Bolshoi Ballet Academy, professional dancers, even our ambassadors. We have not only, um, you know, pre-pros and dancers in full-time training, we have a lot of um, professional ambassadors too. Um, don't forget also we do a lot of live streams on both Grishko World and Nikolai World. Please follow us both because we are the same people. If you come into contact with those fakes, please do not wear them. Get your money back. Don't buy the fake shoes because they are produced in China by Sansha and they are very poor quality. They do not have access to any of our technologies, our secrets, our lasts, our cobblers, nothing. They are nothing like the real deal. So please, please, please support the real shoes the real brands and support your Nikolai retailer as well that is very crucial shop local and ensure that you're keeping your local retailer in business especially in these difficult times I cannot stress that enough um just got to scroll through by the way guys if you have any questions point shoes ballet about the brands, feel free to pop it in. I'm reading comments from the Grishko World page as well, just to see Mexican my... recipes. I'm happy to share recipes. Mexican recipes. Oh I'm my happy god! To share. Yes, <laughs> I'd love to hear about that. <laughs> um, so someone on Grishko World has actually said, "How can I break my point shoes in?" So basically, well, it's a, first of all, it depends what shoes are you actually wearing. Um, if you're wearing Grishko or Nikolai point shoes, um, if you're wearing the models with innovative technologies such as the thermoplastic shanks, please do not bend those by hand at all. They are designed to mold your feet by heat, so simply wear them. 
Um, of course, there's many techniques to breaking in point shoes, but honestly, if the point shoe is fitted correctly and it's the right strength for your foot, here's what you need to do. You simply need to take the shoe, sew it, prepare it, put it on your feet. And what I personally tell everybody to do in, in parallel position or sixth position, as some people call it, do some roll throughs with your feet, working through demi point, three quarter to four point, rolling up, rolling down, relevés, um, first position, second position, fifth position, wearing them around the house, wear thick socks over the top so they get nice and hot. The hotter your feet get, the quicker they're going to mold to the foot. Wearing them, letting your feet do the work. Of course you can, like, you know, what I personally do is at the shank, if it's not the thermoplastic models, I will see where the dancer's arch is because everyone's arch is in a different area. And I will work out where it is on the shoe. You know, for example, maybe it's here. And I will gently bend it a little bit. Nothing crazy, but just enough that we get it into the arch. So it's like a little shelf, if that makes sense. Because what's important with the shank is it should distribute your weight. And it shouldn't be too hard that it's like this. But you don't want it super bendy that it breaks. You know, it has to be the correct shank for you. So, you know, let your feet do the work. I mean, when you're a beginner, it's very tricky because you do not understand as much. When you get older, if you're a professional, it's a bit different because you'll be wearing different shoes for different things. And you might need um, a different strength shoe for a different role. And you might like to three quarter or half your shanks or you might wear custom shoes where that is done. But please don't go crazy. There are many weird videos on the internet doing crazy things like steaming them, whacking them on the ground, um, hammering them, all this crazy stuff that you really don't need to do with your shoes. And don't forget, for you guys that are not professionals, your parents are usually paying for your shoes, unless you're an adult. So your parents don't want to constantly buy and point shoes if you're breaking them very quickly. And if you're not breaking them in it well enough to support your feet. Um, so my advice is don't go mad and just make sure you work with a really good fitter and that they choose the correct strength shoe for you, both in paste of the shoe and the shank strength. And just be very careful about that. Please don't just go on YouTube and type in how to break in point shoes because you'll come up with some very strange um, videos. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Don't you agree, do not, Gabby? It's crazy. Do not touch your point shoes with your hands. That's not the right thing to do. There is a lot of weird people in internet doing weird things with their point shoes. That's not the right way to do it. If no. you are a professional ballerina, you already know what you can and can't do exactly. with your point shoes. If you are a beginner, um, I'm going to show you right now uh, let me see if you can see. Okay. If, if you are a retailer and you are watching us, do not, uh, and my advice for you is do not touch the ribbons to adjust the point shoe. Oh, yeah, the draw in your uh -huh. customers. Don't do that. The point shoe needs to look very neat. I'm yes. not sure if you can see without you I touching agree. the the. The, 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 you know what, the, the Gabby? Brushes. I've been um, okay. I've been for a fitting before where someone um, put the shoe on me and really pulled the drawstring a lot. And I said to them, I said, no. I said, you're trying to create the illusion that the shoe is going to fit me, but it's too wide. Please don't exactly. do that. Exactly. <laughs> so if you, want, if you are a beginner and you want to break your point shoes, I'm not sure if you can see me. You'll have to lower it a little bit. Let me see. Let me see. Let's see here. Can you see me if I do this? Hang on. No, it needs no. to go lower down if you can. Maybe pull it, put something behind it, or you need to aim the, aim the, that's better. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, uh, remember, I'm, I'm trying to hold my iPad right here. Oh, I see. Put Let's it on the see. floor. Pull it on the floor and angle it down a bit. Let's see. Let's move. It's tricky, Move I know. and adapt. That's <laughs> what we are, everybody is doing. Yes. Let's see. Um, no, it needs to go a little bit lower if you can. There you go. Bit better. Yes, yes, that's better. Can you do, can you see? Where can you go back a little bit more? Yes, of course I can. 
Yeah, that's better. Mm -hmm. There you go. The first thing you need to do is, I am a very traditional, I'm a very traditional person. This is how I was taught and I was go I'm going to pass this to you right now, okay? You, you don't uh, manipulate the ponchos with your hands. This is what you do. You go on first position and you do tondu and then you push, okay? Uh -huh. This is the way you break your shoes. You do this several times, several times with a very slow music. You can use a vibe. A vals is ideal because you need to be very relaxed. I'm sure you are going to be like very excited because you are using your ponchos for the very first time. That's why a waltz is going to keep you calm and relaxed. And you do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight. As simple as that, you go to first close and you do the same, okay, in the front. If you are hesitating about, if you are not sure if you are on point or you are not in point, I have a very nice trick for you to see. You go, you grab the bar, okay? Well, I don't have a bar. I do have two nice chairs right now. I'm going to use it. You go first, second, and then you go plie. Oh, yeah. And, uh huh. Okay? And then you watch. Okay, this is very tricky. <laughs> and then you watch your reflection on the mirror, okay? If you are like this, oh, you God, are not yeah. point. No. You correct yourself. You go. Pushing forward. Push, 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 straight, and coming down. Remember, it's been banned from almost all the techniques. The roll over up. This is been banned already. We are not using that because it's been proved that puts so many strain on the ballerinas. We are just going to use roll over, down, okay? And to go on point, we just lift and point, okay? So again, just push, push, and second, push, and push. And if you are hesitating, one, two, plie, not like this, remember. Turn out always. Okay, so that's, that's pretty much what I, what I do to break my point shoes. And that's uh, the advice I will give you to break your point shoes if you want to to break them in the right position. As Leanne mentioned before, a nice feature I love in both Grishko and Nikolai is the fact that they break in very high, okay? Exactly, they, they break to, to the break arch. Very high. So as high the point shoe breaks, okay, as beautiful, the ballerina line is going to be. When so the crucial that it breaks works with you. Here in the arch, okay, you make look that you have like the periquet foot. We call it pie de perico in Mexico. Is that, uh, is that uh, something that we can see sometimes when it seems that you are too heavy for oh. the strength of your shank. Uh-huh. And the shank is just bending in a weird too low. in a very weird way. Yeah, I know what you mean. Too low. Yeah. Don't and like it can make that. a knuckle as well. Yes. I like 
Grishkos and Nikolai that breaks really high because it makes me look taller and higher and helps me to keep my heels very high, which is very important. And it's the key for you to dance on point shoes. And it's high. also, um, just to add to that, um, with the shanks breaking too low, what also tends to happen is the dancer will bend with her metatarsals more and then the ankle bone gets left behind, right? Um, yes. And you know what bothers me is on Instagram, a lot of girls repost these pictures of professionals in very dead shoes where that's happening and they say they want that. And I'm like, what are you on about? You don't want that. The shoe's not even supporting her. Like, that is literally a very, very dead shoe she shouldn't even be wearing. And it's just for a picture. Like, you, you cannot wear shoes in class or for a performance that are that dead because you're going to actually probably break a metatarsal, but also it's very unattractive. <laughs> yes, it is. And, and God forbid I lose my mind during this pandemic because I'm going to, to start to screenshot those people and I'm going to post all these horrible pictures in Facebook. I swear I'm going to do it. <laughs> and you know what also is so funny is like, the problem is um, like, I also see girls and boys overworking their feet, trying to get higher arches, higher insteps, more flexibility. But guys, you were born with what you're born with. Um, you can, the best thing to do is to work with what you've got and to work on the strength and technique. And please don't worry about being mega flexible in your feet and ankles, because actually dancers with extremely flexible feet and ankles are very diff difficult to fit, but also they have more liability for injury and they can kill point shoes quicker also. So please don't worry about all this mega flexible ankle that touches the floor and all this business. You don't need it. As long no, as you got, don't. You know, right, as long as you've got sufficient rotation in your ankles yes. and you've got the strength and the turnout and everything else that goes with it. Don't forget about the rest of your body, your knees, your hips, your back, everything else, core strength, the works. Please do not worry about having the foot that touches the floor when you sit straight and point your feet. You don't need it. No one's yes, going to care don't. about that. Just no go to Ilan or come to Ballet Boutique. We will give you the right Grishkos or Nikolai for you to work with what we what you already have. Exactly. And make you feel and look beautiful. <laughs> it's important. Um, and also, um, girls and boys watching, um, please don't dance in dead shoes. Be aware of what's happening. If you are new to point and you're worried your shoes are dead, contact your fitter, ask your teacher. Don't just sit and wait around. Like It's crucial that you get refitted at least every six months, in my opinion, because your feet change, your strength changes, you can grow as well, don't forget. So please don't just think, oh, I'll wait a little bit longer, because the more you're in dead shoes, the more liable you are to injury. Your alignment can be off whack. Your dancing won't be as good. So it's just not worth it, you know? Any questions, pop them in the comments. I'm reading both screens. Let's see. Um... Sorry, just replying to a comment on this one. I'm very happy because uh, before this pandemic hit us, I was uh, having a lot of male dancers to be fitted. That's great. I love that. Me too. And I that's love fitting guys. Great. Yes, I really like it. I it's really wonderful. Like it. The poncho work, I think it should be mandatory for everybody, yes. girls and boys. Yes, because makes a difference. the strength that you are going to achieve by using your, your point shoes, it's great. Mm -hmm. And even if you decide that you don't want to dance on point shoes, you can use the experience to gain strength. And also, if you decide later in life to be a teacher, that will be a great, a great experience yes. for you to share with your students. You can scream what if, um, at them better if you know what you are screaming at them yes. for. Yes. One of my favorite point teachers is a man and he's in his 70s now. 
and he used to dance with Royal Ballet and he um, used to do point. Obviously back then it was very unheard of for guys to do point, even for fun. Um, but he did it and it paid off because he is so great at teaching point. He's one of the best teachers I've ever had for point. So it goes to show that, you know, if you can do some point work, it really is going to benefit you greatly. Uh, Samantha, she does have a great question. She's oh, asking yes. if there's anatomical difference when feeding males compared to females. Yes, definitely. I have discovered, uh, unless Leanne have different opinion, that uh, uh, male dancers tend to have wider feet towards the toes yeah. and are also uh, they are also have more strength so most of the times I need to go with wider boxes and very strong shanks yeah and also um, some men have very stiff ankles because typically men's most men have stiffer ankles than women so often you'll find that um, when they're on point they might struggle to get over enough so that's another factor we have to think about. Um, but yeah, like Gabby said, they tend to be wider on the metatarsals, of course. Also, um, profile height. So the side of the foot, the chunkiness, that can be chunkier. So we have to take that into consideration because we cannot, of course, put them into low profile shoes because it won't work. Um, and yes, like Boulder Bodywear said, ankle flexibility is less. Absolutely. Yes, it is. Um, also, sometimes you find with the guys um that when they're on point because they've got a lot of weight to carry they can go through shoes quicker so we have to be very careful what we choose not only in shank but also in box paste because if we put them in a flexible paste box it's going to be destroyed in a matter of no time so um so most of the time i end up doing a custom order um to make it really work for that dancer um, and we also need to ask questions such as, you know, how much point work are they going to do a week? You know, if they're going to be doing a lot, they're going to go through shoes quicker. Um, so that's another factor that goes into it. Of course, um, another thing I would say is arches. Some male dancers are not lucky enough to have like an average arch. They can have quite low arches. So, um, again, that comes into consideration with them getting onto point fully and giving a nice line to the foot, of course. Um, so yeah, that, that's also that. But I'm really glad that there's more men doing point. And I think that it, it does make a difference to when they do part of their work because they understand point work a lot better. Um, so the girl they're dancing with, they can get a much better understanding of how part of their work so they dance on point. Our store in Cancun, it's as, as you... Uh can imagine, very close to Riviera Maya. And in Riviera Maya, you have all the hotels lined one after other. All these oh, hotels wow. offers very nice uh, shows and m very often they include dancers. So dancers in Riviera Maya, male dancers, are very used to dance in point shoes and they are doing a great job. I just love them. They are great. And a few months before the pandemic, we do have in Merida, Yucatan, remember, I am from Merida, Yucatan, where Chichen Itza and the pyramids are, we do have the pleasure to receive uh, Les Ballets of Trocadero. Oh, yeah. And I was sitting in first, in the first row. Yeah. And I, I was not watching anything but their point shoes, trying to figure it out what shoe was wearing each one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It I was love doing great. That. It was great. <laughs> That's a great, great fun. experience. <laughs> yes. I've not seen them yet, but I've heard great things. Um, Dali says, is it possible to do point with nearly flat feet? So yes. when you've got flat feet, um, as long as your ankles are flexible, yes. yes. However, if your feet are flat and your ankles aren't flexible, not really, if I'm honest. Um, I've actually had to turn away some people before that were flat-footed and their ankles just did not point enough at all. And, you know, they tried to work on it. They saw a dance physio, but it just was a no-go. It wasn't safe. They could not get on the platform no matter what shoe you tried them in, no matter what shank you put them in. Um, so... As long as you've got enough range when you point your foot, 
it's going to work. But if there's not enough range there, you're going to struggle. Of course, go and see your fitter to see what happens. Um, but generally speaking, if both of those um, aspects are not there, you, you're going to struggle. Have you ever had that, Gabby, where you've got someone with no arch and a really stiff ankle? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And, and I'm trying to, to explain that they don't need to feel discouraged. This, as Leanne said, okay, this, it's the trick. The ability to do this. The flexibility yes. of the ankle yeah. is the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, and yes. now during the pandemic, it's a great time to watch your whatever thing you're watching on TV and exercise. Do that. That. Mm -hmm. That's one of the points I address in the myths and realities talk uh, I, I put together. It doesn't matter if you have a flat feet, you can still dance on poncho. Yes. Flat feet are often related to an extra flexibility of all the bones mm -hmm. that conform your feet. The, the, I just the issue thought of something is when else. you don't have flexibility on the ankle. That's the issue, not flat feet. If yeah, exactly. Feet, it's all to do with the we ankle. Still, we still you know have what? A very also, nice um, shoes for you. Don't worry. I've also had dancers that have the extra bone in the back of the ankle. I always try, oh, I can't pronounce the medical term. If you've got that extra bone in the back of your ankle, um, you can get that bone removed. Um, obviously, to get this diagnosed, you have to see a medical professional. But if you have this extra bone in the back of your ankle, it's, I can't remember how many of the percentage of the world the has osteogonum. it. That's the one. The and um, the yes. problem with it is, is if it's very bad, it will really restrict your range when you point your foot. So if you're curious that you might have that, Go and see a doctor first, because if you do have it and you're struggling to point your foot even and you're getting pain or whatever, they can remove that bone and you can actually increase the range again. So it's, you know, something to consider. I have met dancers with it um, that haven't been able to do point until they've got it removed. Obviously, I'm not talking, this isn't super common, but I just wanted to address it. Um, but also, I want to mention, if you're an adult, of course, your bones, you know, at 21, your bones are pretty much fixed where they are. There's not going to be much change that you can do to the flexibility of the ankle, whatever, right? You can work on it, of course. But when you're a child, it's even better because you are still growing and you have more um, time to work on those factors. So, you know, if you're, if you're under 21, you can still work at it and push yourself Obviously, don't push yourself to the degree you might get hurt, but you can improve things greatly. Um, Peter's just informed me it's 25, actually. Oh, well, in the UK, we're always told it's 21. Um, I don't know. Maybe US is different. <laughs> but we're always told it was 21 for some reason. Um, but, you know, if you're young, don't panic. There's time for you to improve, you know, the range in your joints. But if you're an adult, it's, it's harder and it's not as likely to change. Um, yeah. Any, oh, D Dahlia says, I've been stretching my ankles and holding relevates for one minute every day. Perfect. That's great. Keep up the good work. <laughs> <laughs> one minute every day. Maybe a little bit longer than one minute would be good, but you're on the right track. And also, please don't forget about metatarsal exercises and working your toes as well. So toes long, no crunching toes, please. That's really crucial. Um, working on um, domain exercises for your arches, you know, with the metatarsals, you can do exercises such as picking up marbles, pencils, a towel, so forth, even picking up a ferroband and crunching it with your toes and picking it up to work with all the little um, muscles in your feet. But also, uh, um, when you point your foot normally, keep your toes long because if you are one of those dancers that crunches your toes, when you get to come to have point shoes, that's going to be a major issue. Um, okay, I'll read that comment in a minute. Minute. We've got one. Dancer Daily has a, a very, very interesting question. I just I will saw try that. To Go set on. up my iPad. I am not good at that, but I will try to do it for you to see exactly what you are asking. We've got one okay. minute forty left on this feed, so it's going to reboot in a minute. Just to let everybody know, we will restart it for a little bit longer. But I have got a point you're in at ten thirty, so I can't stay for too long. 
I'm not sure if a you virtual can see. Team, by the way, because we're still in lockdown. Yeah, carry on. Sorry. Can you see? This uh, is a straight, a straight line. I think that's what you are asking. She says, if you straighten your knee from your knee down to your shin and toes, it should be a straight line. Do ankles yes. curve? So everyone's ankles curve different. But I think what she means is when you're on point, you should be straight. You know, no bent knees or whatever, which, yeah, exactly. The answer is yes. You're absolutely yeah. right. When you're on point from the side, we want to see hip to knee to ankle bone to big toe all in alignment. Obviously, if someone's got sway backs, it's a little bit different. Or if someone's um, got really stiff feet and they're not on their platform, their ankles drop back, we don't want that. You've got to keep straight and aligned. It's very crucial. We've got 42 seconds left on this. So I will reboot it so we can do an extra 15 minutes. But um, I have to go at a certain time because I've got a virtual fitting to do. Um, don't do this with your toes. No, definitely. This. We have 42 seconds. I will try to run. Don't don't crunch your toes. No, definitely don't, not. Don't do this. this. No. Always okay? long. Long. It's better for you to control your your shoes. Absolutely. So I'm just gonna reboot this stream to so come back in a second, guys, and we'll do a little bit longer.